Hi guys, it's David here. I just wanted to take a minute to tell you all about Football Prizes. Football Prizes is a website which you might have guessed by the name, gives you the opportunity to win prizes to do with your club. Uh, you can win, in fact, at this point, if you're a Rangers fan, a uh, Steven Gerrard signed Rangers shirt, nicely framed, ready to go. All you need to do is go to their website and enter. You go to footballprizes.co.uk and you'll also find them on social media. Uh, if you go to Facebook, it's uh, Football Prizes. Twitter, it's uh, at football underscore prizes. And Instagram, it's football dot prizes. So, even Easy to find them, easy to enter, and you might walk away with a lovely framed Steven Gerrard signed Rangers top, so you know what to do. Hi there and welcome to Heart and Hand, the Rangers podcast, the extra show. This is our first extra show of the year. Um, My name is Cammy Bell. Happy New Year to everyone. I hope you've really enjoyed it. And I'm pleased to say that today I'm joined as a launch of our 2021 extra shows, the boss himself, Mr. David Edgar. David, um, I won't wish you a happy new year. I've done that already because I speak to you frequently. Uh, But thank you for coming on extra. It's great uh, to be able to talk to you. We we don't get a chance to do that so regularly on pods, um, but always brilliant to have you on. Thank you. Fun to be here. Um, David, we uh, had the Rangers Review show, uh, which came out with yourself, Stevie Clifford, the four lads had a dream, and CJ Novo as well from his brilliant YouTube video. I thought it was a great laugh listening to you guys and stuff as well. Um, obviously, it was in place of a regular flagship show on Monday, um, but in fairness, it's always great to hear you guys sit and do a bit of a kind of round table, uh, particularly focused on uh, what I think was uh, a very, very strong result over Celtic last weekend. Yeah, it was, and uh, it was a fun show. I hope people enjoyed it. But uh, uh, yeah, uh, it, always easy shows to do when you've been Celtic. It really is. <laughs> That's simple. They're the fun ones. They're the ones that you you can't wait to to get your your teeth into. And I think there was a lot of stuff to to take out of it. it it's almost felt this week, I think, like a bit of a strange week for us because we haven't had a game, and it's been really you know either Thursday, Sunday, or Saturday, Wednesday. The whole season, really. Um, and I think that it, it's really felt noticeable this week, Cammy. And Rangers have got this for the next few weeks. And and that has to be seized upon, I think, as an opportunity by the squad because they get the opportunity now to rest and recover in a way that they haven't been able to do previously, where it's just been game, 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 game. Uh, it, it also lets the management... And the coaching staff, I think, work with players on things that they've noticed throughout games. Because it's 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 all right saying I've noticed a tendency to do this in matches, but when you you know, you don't have time on the training pitch, how, how can you sort of when when effectively what you're basically doing is just try to top them up between going into matches? Whereas this week you'll have been able and the next few weeks you'll be able to get Mick Beale, uh Tom Culshaw, all the guys, you know, Gary McAllister on the training pitch and saying, Right, okay, lads, we noticed this in the running games over Christmas, we need to change this or we've got an idea to do this. All of that can be worked in. So I think that the squad have got to see this as an opportunity. Um, well, I mean, you say that, David, but, you know, there's other clubs that, that I'm aware of that feel that having a saunter across to Dubai to sink pints of, of lager by the pool seem like the more prudent thing to do. But you're suggesting that actually what might be better is to uh, focus on player development in terms of working on strategies, being able to try and communicate with the players about how to enhance performances even further. That won't take off, will it? The last thing Rangers should do, regardless of circumstance, even when there's no restrictions on people's movement, is go to Dubai. I think we've established this. It's on the band list. It's nothing to do with COVID. It's on the band list regardless. It's on the band list regardless. See if if the government were encouraging people to go for a winter break, then I would be saying that Rangers can't go to Dubai. In future, if Rangers want to to go on a a midwinter break, they need to run at passes first. I think we're okay with Tenerife. You know, that's that's an option. But Dubai, no, you've had your chance. Uh, you, you, you can't be trusted to come back from Dubai and pick up the results. But yeah, look, uh, it, it, there's nothing really we can add to it. The fact is the country's in lockdown, you know, not tears or lockdown, full on lockdown. And Celtic, I think, abused the privilege that they were granted. They shouldn't have been granted it, incidentally. That's, that's something. People need to remember this when they're criticising Celtic uh, for going, they didn't breach any. They got permission 
Celtic did ask. They went to the relevant channels. So having a go at them for that, I think it's silly. It was terrible optics on their part. I think they would have got away with it in their fans. They gambled they would win the match. Um, had they won the match, I dare say their fans, who are the only ones they really care about, let's be honest, um, their fans would have been okay with it. But it's a terrible, terrible look to be jetting off, sinking pints, having a nice jolly old time of it, uh, when A, you're 19 points behind in the, the table, and B, your fans can't get into the ground, can't travel, can't go and see their family. So, you know, from that point of view, it, it was a disastrous PR move from them, but they got permission. And the question I want answered, Cami, is who at the SFA and the SPFL agreed to this and why? Because I don't buy this. Well, it was November. We've been in a, in a kind of some form of restriction for months. months yeah, I mean, really since, since the summer. Um, so the idea that, that they, they didn't, or we weren't in a full lockdown then, one, it was very clearly in the post. And two, it just was madness. And surely when anyone that I think, anybody with any common sense, when, when Celtic came to so would like to go to Dubai, saying, nah, that's not what this is for, sorry. Um, you, you, we're not having this. This is only for European matches. So, nope, sorry, uh, not going to get rubber stamped. Who did rubber stamp it and why? That's what I think we deserve to find out. Yeah, and listen, Jeremy, I don't want to focus too much on this, right, because it's not why we're here, but the thing is, uh, it's not just the decision, David, but I think what's hilarious for me is that if they get signed off for that in November, that is going to follow a run of results where they've been completely humiliated by us in October uh, throughout the course of the Europa League, um, getting pumped 4-1 um, by Sparta Prague, and they still feel as if it's the prudent thing to do is to be able to try and organise that. So, listen, you know, as I've said to you many, many times, when your enemy's making mistakes, don't interrupt them. So, listen, whether or not it looks bad PR, I think it's not going to galvanise the squad whatsoever. So, listen, I'm, I'm happy to let them continue doing that because I think it's going to make our job easier. However... On to our job, and uh, that is with a trip up to Petodre on Sunday afternoon. Um, Dave, one of the things, and I, I think you made a great point with regards to uh, the opportunity that we've been afforded with uh, staying at home. I know that the manager had said in the run-up to the Celtic game that afterwards, uh, I wanna, I'm want i not going to call it a winter break because I think those words are cursed, but we didn't have a winter break, but we were going to give the players a couple of days off uh, between the Celtic game and the Aberdeen game. Um, just to be able to try and spend some time uh, uh, recovering from such a, a long list of fixtures that we've had over the last few weeks. Um, there's a part of me that also thinks that um, I'm a maternal warrior, so this is just kind of what it's like. But with Aberdeen coming up on Sunday, I, I feel this is a, as an important a test as we could get um, as, as much as the old firm is, because I think we we're all suffering a little bit from the, the kind of the mental residue of the last two years and we want to be able to try and get into these games in January because whilst we've confounded expectations across the board so far this season the January games is for me one of the biggest ones if not the biggest uh, because we need to be able to, to continue on with that run of results now I'm very confident we will do that but do you feel that this has um, got significant important for us given how um 2019 2020 win yeah certainly and the year before um let, let's not forget so rangers have the, the last two years came out after a, a winter break so that's different you know rangers have we've just mentioned we've had a wee bit more time we've had a week right so let's not you know let's not overstate it but the the, the last couple of years for whatever reason rangers came out of the winter break and were flat collectively lost form and struggled very badly over the next six weeks. That That's a fact. That has happened. And it will be thrown at, at the team that they always do it if they continue to do it. So the team have been very good at, at overcoming these little challenges. Like you never win at Rugby Park, they won at Rugby Park, um, for example. Or uh, you, you, you don't respond well to a cup defeat, they responded well to a cup defeat, etc. So the team have been very good at overcoming these challenges that people have said they haven't done in the past. So, yeah, they need to do it. Rangers are in a... Scottish football in general is in a weird position where you've, you know, got, got you know, riots at Side Sharkhead because uh, Celtic went out a cup after winning 12 in a row, you know, 12 trophies in a row. That, that I think, tells you that, you know, that's weird. Most clubs in the world, that wouldn't happen. Equally, Rangers are, are, have won 14 league matches in a row, but we know that if Rangers draw or lose at the weekend, then some people in our own support will, will panic. 
and that is something that I think that we need to to be aware of. It is going to happen. Um, look, at, at some point this season, Rangers will probably drop points. It's just you know we we need to be realistic about it. But you're right, there are certain games. You know, Motherwell was a was a case in point. The Motherwell game after that St Mirren League Cup loss, it was vital that Rangers won the game. And I think that that Sunday is very important as well because it is one of these matches that that the opposition will be looking at us and saying that's one they might drop points and that's one that they'll have their hopes up for that we'll drop points in because you know Pataudry's a tough place to go. So. I think if you can go there and pick up the three points, then you send a message that says, no, look, we're not easing off here. Um, and, and your hopes for a collapse that, that, that you are clearly clinging to, you might as well forget it because it's not going to happen. This Rangers team is not going to do it. So it's important to turn up for the reasons we've stated, you know, the fact the past couple of Januaries have left a bit of a scar. And then also, I think, just to send out a message to anyone who is saying... You know, Rangers, we can take sucker, we can take pleasure in the fact that Rangers will inevitably have this dip in January. If we prove, no, actually we won't. And we tick off Pataudry because that, that, that'll that be us done for going there for the season. Tick that one off and move on to the next fixture. And it puts us in a very, very good position. Well, before we before we kind of talk about where Rangers are at, at the moment as well and just focus slightly on Aberdeen and, and as you say, playing up at Pataudry. Aberdeen um, have kind of, I don't know if you could say they've kind of defaulted into third place because they've only lost three times in the league, twice to us, once to Celtic. They've taken points off of Celtic. They've only got a goal difference of nine goals, so they can score, but they concede in in almost equal measure. Um, I I don't care what anyone says. I know this is a bit of a kind of legacy uh, when you talk about about Aberdeen, but my opinion is steadfast that Aberdeen play four cup finals a season and they're all against us. So, you know, as much as you say there that there will be opposition and if we widen that out from outside of Celtic, I think our various um, enemies in the in, in the wider sphere, they will look towards Aberdeen being able to try and get a result against this at Pataudry. Um And I think that that's going to be a tough challenge. I really genuinely do. I don't think we can underplay it. And that's why there's probably that that degree of confidence that we have at the moment from, from winning an old firm game that was a bit of an ugly win in terms of where we're at. I, I want to touch on that in a second in terms of performance and how we come back to that. Um, so Aberdeen will probably feel like they, they, they should start to get something from us. I think for me, David, the first thing we have to look at here is it's about attitude. It's about we hit the, 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 the refresh button and we put the old firm game behind us. We take that as a great win that it was but we have to take on everything and put everything against Aberdeen on, on Sunday afternoon. I, I don't think we can get carried away. No, of course not. I mean, the, the Rangers need 12 more wins to win the to win the title. And ticking them off one by one is is important. That That's what we need to do. You can't look too far ahead. You can't start to say, well, you know, this and that will happen. Um, especially, you know, the circumstances of the world right now. The, 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 you just can't do that. All we can focus on is we have a big match on Sunday. It's going to be a tough trip. It's going to be a game, you say, against a, a, as you say, against an opposition that will be bang up for it. They know that they can buy themselves a lot of favour with their own support by turning in uh, a, a result in that particular match. And, you know, it, it improves the mood around their club and uh, significantly. So, yeah, that's all you can do. All you can do is focus on each individual match as they come along. Because if you start looking ahead too much, you take your eye off the ball. It really is that simple. And it won't be easy. Aberdeen will will fight very hard. Uh, Rangers did come up against a similarly motivated side in the old fun match. You know, Celtic chucked everything at Rangers in that first half. But I think that the manager himself would would tell you the first half, he he was not impressed at all with, with what we did with the ball. Celtic did play well. There's no doubt about that. But we allowed them to do that uh, because Rangers, our passing wasn't sharp enough. Uh, I don't think that we were as fluid as we have been. Uh, I don't think we were as inventive with the ball as we have been. And you look for an improvement on that side of the game. Uh, I think you know, it wouldn't surprise me to see Yanis Hadji start. I thought he changed the game at the weekend when he came on. So uh, I wouldn't be shocked to to see him start. He, he's had a rich vein of form over the past sort of four weeks or so, and hopefully that can continue. Well, that that's the thing, right? And I think that we we didn't play well. We didn't start well against Celtic, and I think we found ourselves kind of coming into it, and and they they start to kind of 
I'll not say ease down because I don't think it was a conscious effort. You're absolutely right, Yanis had to change the course of the game. But I think for me, looking back in that 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 old firm performance, we didn't start well within the first 25 minutes. I think everybody can agree on that. But then I think that we were the cause of that. I don't think we looked after the ball well enough. I don't think that we matched them for intensity. I don't think that we fully appreciated how quickly they would come out of the traps and how quickly they would start the game. So suppose the question to you would be, do we try to go to that level against Aberdeen in the opening in the opening period of the game? Do we try and you know get it put to bed as early as we possibly can, knowing their own motivations and be able to try and come into that? Um, or is it a case that we go to a similar approach where we just manage our way through it, knowing that they can't keep up that level for the full 90, make effective changes where it's required, if it's required, um, but play our game that served us so well across the course of this season? No, Rangers can't go into a match like that and, and you know, do a rope a dope. Uh, with all due respect, Aberdeen, they're not at the level that we should be doing that against. And and I think that one of the biggest things that's been levelled at the team in certain away matches over the past few years is being a wee bit too respectful and treating it like, you know, that the, we were away in Europe sort of thing. Um, yes, Aberdeen will come out and probably try to fly. I, I think Rangers do need to, and we have been very good this season, incidentally, uh, at getting you know an early goal in a second and really getting ourselves into a strong position, but let's not forget we went to Petardry last year and I thought we were absolutely sensational for 35 minutes, took a two goal lead and ended up drawing two each. Um, so that there is that, and I think that that's something that you know you, you've got to be aware of. You've got to perform for 90 minutes there because they've got nothing to lose even when they're getting beat. They will they'll continue plugging away. Um, yeah, you know, we're based on a very solid back four. And that's that's great, but I think that we need to, you know, make sure that we play football, that we give Aberdeen problems, that that we cause them difficulties. We know they'll be organised. We know um, that they'll be resolute and get men behind the ball. <clears throat> we saw it in the first game of the season at Petardry that without the crowd, they are sort of urging them onto the front foot. That they were able to just do that and to sit in. Um, they were going through, you know, their, their striker crisis at the time, and maybe that affected their mindset. But we've seen them do that against Rangers before, anyway, where they, they simply just want to sit in and try and hit us in the break. I, I don't anticipate that being different. I don't see Aberdeen being particularly gung ho. Yeah, maybe the manager will say to them right and about them the first ten minutes, see if we can catch them cold. But that's a pretty standard thing when you're playing Rangers. But I think that the overall you'll see them stick to the tactics that, that proved successful against Rangers in the past, which is right, you know, everybody knows that you, you, they love man marking Aberdeen, you know, the, the, almost fully through its side. Everybody knows their man, everybody knows what they've got to do. Be compact, stick behind the ball, look to get in on the break, look to win set pieces, look to use those set pieces. So I, I don't think it's going to be a challenge that's anything unexpected. That's, you know, I don't think Aberdeen are going to throw at us at anything new or anything innovative. It's about whether we can overcome that on the day. And we should be good enough to do that. Well, we are, we're recording... Uh, obviously on Thursday this this show will come out uh, later on today and we have the press conference tomorrow and I believe that you know I haven't heard anything to the to the contrary to say that Scott Arfield will be able to come back into it and David there's a part of me just thinks you know the guys that were missing Ryan Jack and Scott Arfield within that midfield these are the guys who I think probably relish some of those more physical elements of the game which we know that Aberdeen will, will look to be able to try and put in against this um, we have to be able to get there and I think the key word that we, we come back to and we've done this time and time again already this season but the key word that we're coming back to here is control so we can play better football and we have a better technique we, ha- we, we, we can pass the ball about and take care of the ball well when we are absolutely on it There's a combative nature, which I think might creep into the game. I think we've seen that plenty of times with Aberdeen in the past. Uh, But I think the midfield will be key to being able to try and control a lot of that. And there is no doubt Arfield will be a miss. Yeah, Arfield will be a miss. So would Jack. And and they have been at times over the last few weeks. I think that that the options that they bring us have been missed in certain matches and certain occasions. But unfortunately, that's going to happen throughout the season. You're going to miss players at certain times. Given the the personnel that we have, and I think that Davis and Kamara have been absolutely brilliant together. you know, over the over the past couple of months, I think that you then have to to be realistic and say, look, play our game because there's no point getting into a physical battle with Aberdeen. That suits them. That's what they want. Um, if if Rangers allow ourselves, and we have done frequently, incidentally, against Aberdeen in the past, where we have allowed ourselves to be sucked into a physical battle, that negates our strength and promotes theirs so you want to make sure you're playing your game which is let's keep the ball on the deck let's fizz it about let's tie them out with our movement let's have them chasing the ball and if Rangers do that 
then then we'll win. And we certainly, you look at the personnel that is available, and that, to me, seems to be the game plan. The person that we've not talked about yet is part of that midfield as a key element is obviously Joe Aribo. And I'm curious to get your take on it, David. Obviously, you were um, at the game uh, last Saturday watching it at home. Um, you know, I think my TV thinks that I've fallen out with it because I was shouting at it so much, but I was actually directing it towards Joe Aribo because I felt at times as if he maybe was a little bit off the pace, uh, a little bit lackadaisical at times. I think, you know, he, he didn't do what he can do so well, which, you know, again, like you say, he's been able to to, uh, to take care of the ball and and, and to make the, the necessary moves and, and been able to try and go forward. Um, but I do have absolute faith that the, man, the management team will have spoken to him between then and now and said, look, you know, you need to make sure that we've got a lot of reliance upon you. Uh, we need a lot from you. Um, and I think if he can if he can recapture that at Pitodre, uh, he's going to be an absolute key element of being able to try and see a forward play really come into the game and really been able to try and drive forward with the ball. Uh, you're right in saying that Davis and Kamara can absolutely do all that kind of stuff. Davis, you know, his dis- distribution has been phenomenal. Um, Kamara as well, I think, is has great vision in terms of being able to find key passes where it has to happen. But Joe Rebo is a big part of that. Comfortable that the management team probably will have reviewed the Celtic game with him and said we need a little bit more from you from the, the, the really big fixtures. Yeah, I mentioned the word caught cold earlier and I think he did. I think, you know, the opening half an hour, he, he, he was nowhere near it. Um, and I think that, that Celtic were on top of him and he he, he struggled and it, there, there's no getting away from it. He stuck at it and he improved in the second half and of course was involved in the goal um, that, that won the game. So, you know, fair play to him for that, for his attitude. But I think in the first, you know, 30 minutes or so, he, he, he was... A wee bit, you know, caught in the headlights, and I'm sure that the management team have said to him that you know, people have said he was the same in that first old firm match last year, and he was. That was his old firm debut, all cutting from slack. But it was good in the the, the old firm win um, that he, that he played in at Parkhead. So I think it's it's a case of, as you say, just saying, look, you're a bad day, but you've had many good ones. You're a better player than that, um, and we need you to to do the things you're good at: getting the ball, run with the ball. Um, keep it moving, keep playing in and around there at the edge of their box, making those wee passes, getting defenders turning, supplying for the front line. Um, he's a very talented player, we know that. He had a bad game. Overall, I think he had a bad game. He improved, though, and that's a good sign. But, yeah, he, he'll know that, and he'll be, I'm sure, wanting to want to improve on that at the weekend. Cammy, let me just stop you there. Uh, normally, of course, people know that we sometimes bring in an ad where we chat about it, but this one is actually quite important uh, in terms of Rangers fans because this is something that will raise money for the club. And, of course, that's uh, something I'm sure we can all get behind. I'm pleased to announce the new official Rangers Pick'em game called Rangers Picks, and it's available to play for every Rangers match. Um, we've been given the opportunity to promote this ahead of Rangers launching the game in the new club app, and that's due in the next two weeks. So there's a bit of an explosive for people. Um, Rangers Picks is a free-to-play pick'em game with a £1,000 prize pool. It's powered by Low6. Six. Low6 Six are working with Rangers on the stadium Wi-Fi, the new club app, etc., and Rangers Picks. So the more fans play, the more money the club receives. Um, only revenue upside for the club, which is excellent news. To play today, all you have to do is hit the link in the description, which is rangerspicks.com, complete 12 questions about the Gels match versus Aberdeen on Sunday, and that gives you the chance of winning a share of £1,000. You must be over 18 to play, T and C's apply, and please always remember to play responsibly. So, Cammy, this will be for every game going forward, where you just go in before it starts, pick 12 questions about the match, who you think will score first, you know, etc., all of that kind of thing, and you get the opportunity to win... Uh, a share, but most importantly, the money raised goes to the club. It's a great idea, Davey, and as I say, um, anything that can help uh, the club and be able to boost finances is certainly a good thing, and if fans can get a little bit of dollar out of the back of it, even better. That's it, you know, so if you enjoy a wee punt on the game, I do, Cammy does, we all do, um, Instead, maybe I go into yeah, bookies where Rangers don't see any of it. Here's an opportunity to to do it. Still have a laugh, still have a chance to win money and put money into the club. Yeah, less than 100%. And I think, you know, it's not a criticism of him. I think that, you know, if anything, it's a compliment about the fact that if he has a bad game, it, stuck, it, it sticks out so much more because you are, you know, used to him being able to, to play at times exceptionally well. And I think that, you know, when, when that's not immediately evident, 
I, I think it just becomes far more obvious than it does with other players. And as I say, you know, he, he can control games beautifully. So hopefully we'll be able to get a return to form with him. OK, David, let's talk about up top. So um, we know that Kamal Roof had an issue with his quad and went off at half time um, in the old firm game. Again, we don't have an update on that as well. So um, let's just go in the assumption that if he is available for selection or, or what happens, I'm keen to, to get your thoughts in terms of what our front three look like. Now, we've obviously seen Yanis Hadji. I think that you've been an advocate for him starting. Um, I, I think Ryan Kent... I think Ryan Kent is trying very, very hard. His industry is tremendous, but sometimes his final product is kind of lacking. Um, but he's one of these guys who doesn't, you know, shuck the big games. He wants to be able to be involved within that. And Alfredo Morelos and Alfredo Morelos, you know, <laughs> Alfredo Morelos and, and Aberdeen have got quite a bit of a unique relationship. I don't think that we can really assess him in old firm games because I do think there's a little bit of a hoodoo around him being able to perform really well against Celtic. But he was involved in what changed the game for us in terms of the beat on red card. Um, when Cedric Itton came onto the part later on, I thought he played very, very well. Had a lovely turn and turn and shot. We had a great connection with the ball and, and was really unlucky not to see it not to see it fly in. Um, everyone being fit uh, and available for selection. What's your front three? Um, I think the front three I would go for if everyone was fit and available would be um, Morelos, Ruth, and Hadji. But I think that if uh, if that's not the case, I, I suspect the ranking will play regardless, uh, and I understand that because he, he you know he can he can carry the ball, and he's got the pace, and he has direct. Um, for me, I would be looking at right, okay, how do we get Adi into the side um, to to see what he can give us a little bit, and then it's just a case of is it uh, you know who who's going to play. So it, it wouldn't surprise me if Ruth's available to see uh, Ruth Hadji Kent start the game if Kamal Roof is fit if not then I think it will be um, Morelos, Hadji and Kent Yeah and I think it's interesting because when we do talk about the combination of, of Morelos and Roof when they're, they're playing as that, that front three, I think Kamal Roof can um, utilise the space that Alfredo Morelos can create uh, with being able to try and run in behind. I, I would assume um, that if we can, because we've obviously got the option now, been able to try and pad out more fixtures because of lack of midweek games across January. Um, it, the, the clear and obvious benefit that that gives us is that we've got more time for recovery for those players who are injured. And that list is starting to top up a little bit. And if we've got those options just now, I wouldn't like to see us risk Kamar Roof if he's not 100% just for the sake of playing him. If we feel that potentially a Kent, Morelos and Hadji front three should be able to do it pretty quickly. So maybe maybe if it's not 100% and, he's, and he is uh, available for selection, I would maybe start on the bench. Do you think that's fair or, or would you want yeah, to Yeah, definitely. To the, the, there's absolutely no point taking risks with key players. Um, and we know that, you know, Kamaru's had injury issues in the past. So, no, I'm, and I'm sure they won't, incidentally. So we, we'll need to wait and see what, what's said at the press conference. But, yeah, I'd love to have him... With, Clearly, we want him to move. He's a superb footballer. Um, if he isn't, though, the options are still decent. Let's be honest. Uh, you know, the, the Kent, Hadji, and, and Morelos would walk into most teams. So, I think that it's not the end of the world. But obviously, we want as many of our players available as, as possible. Certainly, somebody as good as Kamar Roof. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. David, just moving away from from the focus of the game, just before we kind of wrap up and stuff as well, and and and, and where we're at. Keen to get your thoughts. The, the January transfer window has now opened as well. We've mentioned throughout the course of the conversation that uh, we do have uh, some injuries which have, have been ongoing. Uh, we have been, in my opinion, at least quite fortunate, I think, with the fact that we have had some injuries, but we've had squad players who have stepped into it. Guys like Scott Arfield have come in, but obviously now he's carrying an awk himself. This is the course of the season, right? This is what's going to happen across the, the, the kind of length and breadth of it. And I think, as you mentioned earlier on, we are expecting, you know, tough games coming up and the potential for being able to drop points. We can only look to be able to try and put in where, our, uh, you know, we've got a strong squad across the course of that. Is there any particular areas in the team right now that you would look to see us um, prioritise in terms of recruiting uh, across the, the January window? Yeah, firstly, I don't think that there's going to be huge amounts of business done in terms of permanent deals. Uh, you might see some pre-contracts that, always uh, an option at, at any club this time of year so that that um might well be an option but we've got to be realistic about finances 
um, at the moment. So I think that going into the market hugely is is unlikely. You never know if a player becomes available and if he's good, you know, I'm sure the club would move for him. But I, I could see us definitely going in for a loan uh, in terms of midfield, depending on Scott Arfield and Ryan Jack, just to get as a, a wee bit extra cover in there. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me to go see his dip into the loan market there. I think everywhere else, the, the management feel that we're pretty well covered. But um, again, you know, it, it comes down to circumstance. Some clubs, you never know, might might want to sell, might need to sell. Some players that Rangers are keen on a pre-contract might become available at a reasonable amount to get them in the six month early, in which case I'm sure they'll go for it. But other than that, I think, you know, we'll probably, it'll be the loan market that we look at. I think that's fair. Um, I know that we've obviously um, got Bengani Zungu in as well, in, in, in terms of that, that is an option as well. I, I think, it's, I mean, certainly looking towards the entire fixture schedule over the next few weeks for sure, David, is is I don't think that Aberdeen is the, the game to be able to try and bring him in for unless we do have to do it in our hand is, is forced on that. Um, I, I'd like to think that we'll probably see about how we can bring him in for, for, for games kind of going forward. We've got across the course of this month, you know, we've got Motherwell, Ross County, we've got Hibs as well. A range of fixtures in terms of where they're at. I'd like to see Zungu play a bit of a bigger part and my hope is that we can utilise him a little bit more in the, in the upcoming games. Yeah, possibly. Um, he, he, he's been kept out the side by some very good form, let's be honest. Uh, I think, you know, and at the moment, I certainly wouldn't be saying we need to drop Stephen Davis or, or Glenn Kamara for him, um, but he, he has been useful. He's, he's been brought on, the manager clearly has faith in him, uh, especially to shut down games, tight games, and that's a great option to have because we've missed Ryan Jack for that. So, yeah, yeah, I'm sure we will see see more of him in the, in the next few weeks, and uh, that'll be his opportunity to kind of stake his claim for a permanent move. And as I always like to do uh, with my guests who appear on Extra, can you give me your score prediction uh, for the weekend and if uh, Rangers are going to score some goals, who you think will score them? I think we'll win 1 0 and uh, I'll go for. Yanis uh, Hadji. Uh, no, I'll go for Tav because <laughs> I think he's due one. He's due one, right? I thought you'd yeah. go for your boy. You'd, you'd go for your boy, Yanis. He'll set it up. Ah, right, OK, fair enough. He has to get involved in it somehow, as long as David can yeah. support him as well. So, right, well, listen, thank you, David, very much for your time. Um, pleasure. If, if you've enjoyed listening to David and myself, and you aren't already, and if not, why not, jump over to our Patreon site, um, which is patreon.com forward slash heart and hand, where you can get up to five shows a day to talk about everything to do with your favourite uh, football club. Um, David, some great content that we've had across uh, recently, and for anyone who... Uh, has enjoyed it as well. I'm sure they'll be huge advocates of the brilliant 50 greatest Rangers that we did across um, the festive break. Uh, a tremendous series of shows and uh, and just you know one small portion of um, our, what our dedicated podcast team are bringing out to, to everyone on a daily basis. Yeah, absolutely. Um, go and check it out. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Absolutely. Our thanks to our executive producers in London, Mr. Mike Lee and Mr. Paul Myers. Let's get three points on Sunday, folks. Back onto the uh, back onto form and make sure that we uh, we continue that march towards fifty five. As David says, twelve to go. Thanks, everyone. Yeah.